Graham Akers is a man who covers the golfing majors and the Grand Slams for us. Graham, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you, Marty. The Los Angeles, Angeles Country Club. Uh, look, we're filling, talking to Phil Totorangi, who I know you know, who has played around there. I'm trying to find other people in the world that even knew this existed or had played around there. You're our golf guru. Tell me that you actually teed off at the club. I'll tell you something. I lived in Los Angeles in the early 80s, and I drove up and down Wilshire Boulevard many times, and I played several courses there, including Riviera and Bel Air Country Club. But I didn't even know this course existed. Wow. And driving down Wilshire Boulevard, I couldn't even see it. So uh, this is the best kept secret in American golf, without question. It's an amazing place. But it was a very um, closed door club that didn't really want to be engaging in the public world of golf for a long, long time. But there's now a progressive membership there and they are changing the diversity of the membership and opening up this gem to the view of the world, really. And it's a wonderful, wonderful golf course. Is it also a really unusual place and course to be having a US Open? And I ask that, Graham, because the two lowest rounds ever at a US Open were struck today, Shaffler and Fowler, eight under each. Yeah, well, the interesting thing about this course is it's it's been rebuilt back to its early, early days, uh, obviously with a little length uh, put into it. But it's vastly different from most US Opens. The fairways are wide. At the moment, the greens are still a little soft, and that was helped today by the, the so-called marine layer that's famous along the Californian coast. Call it fog. Uh, it, it drifts in and then usually burns up around about lunchtime. Well, today it didn't burn off. So it kept moisture in the course. That's why you're she- seeing these scores. But um, the situation could easily be come the final round of this championship, once the USGA start drying the place out, and hiding pins in really, really tricky spots, which they didn't do today, you may find that eight under is good enough to win it, or even lower. So it's make hay while you can, as far as I'm concerned. Ten birdies for Fowler. I mean, just say that out loud. The course record is 61. You don't get a better start. No, it's absolutely phenomenal. That's the best ever in the US Open, not surprisingly. And Ricky Fowler, 62. Xander Schauffele came in 15 minutes later with a 62 of his own, and they are significant scores. First of all, they're one shot lower than the lowest round ever fired in the US Open, that being 63, and that was fired by many good players, including Jack Nicklaus and Johnny Miller, when he famously fired it in the final round of the US Open that he won at the Oakmont Country Club. Uh, 62 just happens to be the lowest ever round shot in a major championship, uh, Fowler and Shoffle share it with Brandon Grace, who fired that at Birkdale at the British Open back in about 2016, I think it was, the year that Jordan Spieth won. So these are remarkable numbers. But as I said, it will get harder, not easier from here. So they will be very happy to have that in the bank. Graham, a delightful time to be watching golf in New Zealand because the round is still going. So if you've got the day off, you can park up from pretty much late morning and watch it all afternoon. Still out on the course in no particular order, but DJ, Ram, Mickelson, Cameron Smith, Scheffler, DeChambeau, McElroy, and most of those guys are firing good rounds. Uh, yes, and Brooks Koepka, who, um, of course, is Mr. Major, going for Major number 6. Um, a couple of those guys you mentioned have now finished. DeChambeau, 67, 3 under. Scheffler's in at three under after a 67. John Rahm, 69, minus one. They would normally be considered very, very good opening rounds at a US Open. It's just that uh, there's two eight-unders on top of the leaderboard. Um, Brooks Kepka, Mr. Major, is struggling at the moment. Late in his round, he is at plus one, the last time I looked at him. Uh, Dustin Johnson is currently at six under, a score he shares <clears throat> excuse me, with Rory McElroy. McElroy is having a great day today. He's hit every green so far. Uh, those two have a couple of holes left to play. But you're right. This is um, this is late golf on the east coast of the United States. This is evening golf. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that playing that playing up to around nine or ten p.m. at night. So it, it's a different. It's a, just a different feel completely. This own. McElroy five under. I mean, at some stage, Graham, we talked about this every, every single major. I mean, at some stage, sure. When's the last time he won one? Was it seven or eight years ago? I mean, him and Jordan Spieth are the two guys. They won them in clusters and nothing since. What is, is it time? Yeah, 
2014. Yeah, it is. He's just gone to six under, by the way. So he's tied in third with Dustin Johnson and Brian Harmon. Pretty good result. Um, he is overdue. Uh, I think it's fair to say in the last 18 months, two years, he's been consumed as the unofficial spokesman for the PGA Tour in this war with Liv. And um, I think he feels like the weight has come off his shoulders and he can just go back, <clears throat> excuse me, to conf- concentrate on playing proper golf, which is exactly what he's doing. And this, this course, I'm not going to say it's like a British Lynx. It's more like Royal Melbourne and Adelaide. But it's a course um, that McElroy is familiar with playing, you know, moving the ball around from here to there, taking on shots when you, you think you can do, do it, but not being frightened to lay up and make booties and pass the hard way. So I, I'm hoping Rory can, you know, really make a challenge here at this championship. And as I said, six under with three to go, he's in a pretty good spot. Ryan Fox, two under. I know he left a couple out there. We're going to be talking to Phil Tatarangi, who I know that you know as well, just specifically about his round. But that's a damn good start, right? He's tied for 14th. Yeah, he is tied for 14th. That's better than a damn good start. It's excellent. Um, three birdies, Phil will fill you in on those. And just the one bogey. I mean, that's solid, solid golf in a US Open. So he's proving yet again that he belongs in the upper, upper echelon of golf. And uh, let's just hope he can keep keep going and put in three more good rounds. As I said, we may find that eight under is the winning score. So he's far from out of it, as you said, uh, tied for 14 at this stage. Definitely will be in the top 20 by the end of the day. So things looking good. Graham Agars is with us. We're talking about the US Open at golf. Do you like it, Graham? Do you like the fact that, you know, we've got scores like this on the first day? They may stay, they may not, as you say. They might move the pins around. We don't know what the weather's... I mean, the weather looks okay, but we don't know whether that will have any effect at all. But do you like it overall? Yeah, I love it. Because even though we've got eight under on top of the leaderboard and a bunch of guys at uh, six under, four under, you name it, we've also got um, quality players like Jason Day, Justin Thomas, both major winners, shooting three over 73s today. Brooks Kepka, as I said, Mr. Major, is currently one over par. So it's easy for some, but not for others. And that's how this course should be. But the warning is that the USGA will toughen this thing up over the next three days. And they're going to have to work harder for their birdies than they are today. Well, I'm hoping at the end of this tournament that you've got to get an invite to play this. Graham, there's not a course in the States you haven't played. I can't believe that you haven't been invited there. You haven't swung a club there. Yeah, well, as I said, if you don't know it exists, it's very hard to get on. Um, but you're right. I've played most of the major golf courses around the world because when I was younger, I used to drag my clubs along and play on the Monday press day that they traditionally have after all the major championships. And I would absolutely love to play this place. But... Um, I'll put that on my bucket list going forward now that it's more open and it will be incredibly famous after this um, US Open is over. I'll see if I can get there and and try and break 100. Are you going to watch any Ashes as well? Um, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to do it because the cable uh, that I have here in the US doesn't have it and it's hard to find a package that shows it. Um, so I'll keep an eye on it here and there and watch a few highlights on the computer at night. But um, Australia's going to win, so, you know, I don't have to bother that much. Didn't even need to ask you that question, Graham. It's always a pleasure, mate. We'll talk again on Monday. Graham Agar's covering the US Open for us.